spinoffs. The tradition is old as Poochie. Well, I actually a lot further back than that. Uh, but how they relate to comics. Comics do spinoffs all the time, and most of them bomb. But let's take a look at why. Hey there, this is Birch. Um, talking about spinoffs. So spinoffs are something that I think it seems to come in waves, you know, and, and part of it's the strength of a team book. So in, in the late 80s, uh, 90s, when you had kind of the, as we talked about before, the renaissance of team books, uh, team books were kind of downplayed for a while um, when the X-Men really became the sales kind of beast that it was. And then we had a bunch of kind of spinoffs of that. Um, the, it was very natural for a team book to eventually spin off a character you know, now appearing in their very own solo series. You know, it's Gambit, and Gambit has his solo series. But the spinoffs were almost always unsuccessful. Um, but you know, give or take, you know, there there are definitely the exceptions prove the rule. Uh, Wolverine is a classic spinoff that worked really really well. But it is curious that despite the popularity of the X Men a very small handful of titles successfully spun off. You know, Cable did mostly, Deadpool certainly did, but characters like Storm, uh, Colossus, Iceman, uh, all the, all these, you know, Cyclops, there's been a lot of, Jean Grey had a solo series for a little bit and then a mini series. And just, there's been a lot of, of attempts to spin characters off. And, you know, from a, from a money-making perspective, spinoffs are great. It's definitely what we want to have happen. It's uh, you have a popular character selling in a team book, and we're going to spin them off to get another book, and now two books are selling instead of one. Awesome. That's the dream. That's that's what we want to have happen. But if you look, you know, across the board, spinoffs have a problem, I mean, and it's and a lot of it, I think, is because when you have a team book that has a storyline and has a uh, plan. A, you know, in some cases, a multi-year plan, then the, the reader gets this message, whether kind of consciously or subconsciously, that the important things are happening in the team book. And the solo book is going to be, you know, nothing really important can happen in the solo book because it can't, uh, you know, you can't disrupt the team book. So therefore, whatever kind of little adventures happen in the solo book, they they don't really matter. They're going to be erased by the end of the series or, you know, or just kind of ignored by the team book. And that's kind of a shame because, well, it's not kind of a shame. It's a huge shame. It's, uh, it's kind of the nature of a very popular writer or storyteller on the team book, not being involved in the spinoff or the solo book. And therefore, you know, little coordination happens, you know, the editor, you know, even in good times, the editors didn't always have good control over that. And in, in modern times, the editors have zero control. <laughs> See, they're not even reading book, book to book. It's, uh, it's how you get into the completely baffling uh, case of like Dakin in uh, X-23 being a, a hero and then simultaneously in Iceman being uh, a, a villain, like a straight up like sociopath villain. And you... <laughs> You you see these books, you're like, how in the world are these books being published at the same time, have complete, like, radical different versions of the character? And, you know, why isn't editorial talking? And you look at it, like, oh, it's the same editor for both. Uh, hmm, okay, <laughs> what what is going on? Um, that is the challenge solo books have had, uh, spinoff books have had, I should say. But it's also kind of the biggest miss opportunity because... Uh, if you have a popular selling team book and a popular selling bit of characters and you can just, you know, connect the dots to make it meaningful and to make, you know, things that happen in a solo book actually meaningful. I mean, the crazy part is uh, Sin of Grace with Iceman was given a ton of, uh, well, not leeway, but just he said, I'm going to do some some big things for the character. I'm going to have Bobby come out to his parents. I'm going to have Bobby, you know, face future version of himself. I'm going to have you know, Bobby and Bishop do some things together, meet, meet Emma Frost, you know, just some, some pretty, you know, what was interesting about Santa Grace's run, um, more the second set than the first set, is that unlike a lot of other spinoffs and solo books, he was not forced to use kind of no name, unknown villains and not, you know, dip into the, the core cast. Uh, they, they, they were 
he was he was playing with the big characters and he was doing things that that were meant to be reflected in the the, the core book or the team book. And yet, uh, you know, still, despite that, um, you, you know, whether, whether people like the writing or not, I mean, Iceman's always going to be a tough sell. But despite all that, uh, the, the, the audience still had the impression that this was a useless book, that this was a, a book that did not matter to continuity. And unfortunately, if you have that feeling, that vibe, that, that the customer believes that is true, it doesn't really matter if it's a great story or a terrible story, the end result is going to be the same, which is, which is apathy. And that's why spinoffs are tough, but they, but, but if, and, and how hard could this possibly be? You control the characters. If you had say an Iceman series where Iceman, I, I don't know what, uh, some big thing happens. So he, he loses an arm or he, well, it's, that's not, not that he's going to be Thor, but just some major thing happens to him. He gets a new villain that's actually significant. The villain comes in and messes up the X-Men and Bobby has to go avenge them or whatever is going on. Um, if if you went with a story like that, um, you would send a message, a powerful message to the readership, which was you can't afford to miss this title. You cannot afford to miss this spinoff book. This spinoff book is important. And if you can send that message, then you're home free. I mean, you're, that is, you, you, you actually, the funny thing is you only have to do that for one book for one spinoff and you would instill a bit of that. Oh, I guess I should pay attention for like four other books. You, you'd build credibility really, really fast. And so it's, it's just a, a just an easy moneymaker just waiting to happen because unlike you know, TV or movies or any of these other areas where spinoffs are tough. You know, the Sean Hobbs Fast and the Furious spinoff is going to make a ton of money, but they had to pay The Rock. They had to pay, uh, you know, what's his face who's with The Rock. They had, to, they had to cough up some cash to make this movie. With comics, uh, you, you don't, you know, you need to hire good creative talent, good writers, good artists, of course, and pay the money for that. But you, you have none of those restrictions. You can tell a big, huge, widescreen, major story. And that's, it, the, I'll put it this way. And somebody said this to me and it really stuck with me for a long time. And that is, it costs the same amount of money to do a huge, you know, quote unquote, special effects budget, uh, major action story of Wolverine blowing up buildings and flying helicopters and fighting Sabretooth and the whole X-Men guest stars in a page. And then the Avengers is on the next page that costs you the same money as an issue with Wolverine, you know, drinking coffee with an old friend and being introspective of his life back in the war and, and uh, maybe realizing some inner, inner beauty that lurked within him the entire time you're paying the same. Now in TV and movies, massively different budgets. You know, you want to film, you want to film uh, Hugh Jackman in a coffee shop drinking coffee. You're paying for Hugh Jackman, but you know, not not an expensive set, pretty easy shot. You want to film Hugh Jackman with all of the Avengers, from Robert Downey Jr. to uh, Chris Evans, uh, all of them, plus all the X Men, plus you know the Beyonder is there, and the Galactus is blowing up the planet. Uh, that's going to cost you hundreds of millions of dollars to pull all that together. But comics, same amount, big budget, low action introspective story, whatever it happens to be, same, same cash, same, same thing. So therefore, uh, why, why is it that, uh, the comics at times spinoffs feel like they're doing it on the cheap that they're having to, uh, they're like, well, we don't have the, we don't have the budget for a big Wolverine battle. So we're going to have Wolverine drinking coffee. Why? Uh, anyway, um, I don't know if that analogy made any sense. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, tell me where I'm crazy. Do you like spinoffs? What's a spinoff you love? There, there have definitely been some successful examples, just a lot more failures and examples. So what are, what are some that you remember you love? Would love to hear from you. Uh, like, subscribe, notify, tell a friend. Let's get the subscriber growth up because then I will make more of no money. That would be awesome. Uh, contribute to my Patron. I like to drink. And uh, follow me on Twitter at uh, Comic Perch. Thank you for listening.